it happens to all of us at some point or another. The dreaded super high workload phase. Um, lots of things are happening. People want things from you with very short deadlines. Everything is piling up on top of you and you might feel overwhelmed or you might feel trapped and you might think that the only option is to, is to push through because that, that's the only thing that you can do right now. It's just, uh, you know, uh, shut up and do the work, basically. And um, what if I told you that actually you could avoid this type of phases and make sure that they are not happening frequently in your life? It's possible. So if you love that, then keep watching this video because I'm going to share with you how to make sure that you reclaim your agenda, your sanity, and that you find a reason that is working for you. And I'm going to do this chronologically. So from when you are in this phase to when you are uh, preparing to avoid the next one. So if you are in this stage right now, if right now you say, yes, I am in it, I'm deep in it, it's very high workload, and uh, there is nothing more I can do than doing the work. Um, I would challenge you, first of all, that there might still be things that you can do. Obviously, you have to deliver the work, so you will need to, you know, find a way to navigate it in, a, in an easier way. And the two things to look at here is really make sure you still prioritize your recharge. Make sure that you keep your energy high. Not working until 5 a.m. in the morning and waking up at 7 to do another day of work. Uh, not avoiding spending time with people because you don't want to, you know, you don't, don't have time for that. Um, I would really challenge you, like, prioritize your energy. Take more breaks than what you think you should be taking. If it feels like a luxury right now, it's because it's important. So it's important that you also listen to that and listen to your energy. Just a five-minute break can actually help you be more productive in the next hour. So whatever you feel is so urgent you cannot take a break for because it has to be done, it's probably going to be done faster if you take a break right now. So challenge yourself in terms of recharging and energy. And the second thing to do is also right now, challenge. Challenge, is there a real deadline? Is it really up to me to do this thing? Is there somebody else who can do it? Um, what if we postpone it? Who can I talk to to actually address the fact that I cannot do all these things at once and I feel really exhausted? You can always challenge, but you need to go at it. You need to have the courage to do that. And you need to, you know, just be, be very like, yeah, that's not working right now. Let's find a solution to make sure that I can navigate that and not completely crash out of it. So step number one, when you are doing it, prioritize your recharge and challenge the heck out of everything that, that, that's happening on your place. Then second step, after, do a post-mortem. When you are done with this type of uh, very high workload phase, it's very tempting to just sit down, relax, do nothing for a while, enjoy a smaller workload, and you know, just, just recharge and, and let it go. That's why you end up doing it again another time. It's because you've not learned the lesson from this specific phase. And I'm going to be very, very brutally honest with you here. If you ended up in a high workload phase, it's because of yourself. It's because of decisions you've taken or not taken. It's because of the way you've communicated with people around you. It's because of maybe you just love to, to feel busy and it makes you feel, uh, you know, uh, worth it. There can be many different reasons, psychologically, your own patterns or external factors that can be at uh, play. But ultimately, if things are piling up in your agenda and they become unmanageable, it's because of things you've not done early enough in the process. So I would always recommend you to do a post-mortem and really go and do a deep analysis. So questions you can ask yourself is, what created the pileup? How did I get there? How did I not see earlier that this was going to pile up in so many different things at the same time? Uh, what was under my control to do differently earlier? Maybe you could have planned differently. Maybe you could have communicated with your clients, your manager differently, um, far in advance. Uh, maybe you could have stayed no earlier. Maybe um, something would have been helpful in terms of, um, you know, um, setting, setting different expectations. There will always be things that you could have done earlier in the process. So go and think about that because they will be helpful for avoiding the next time, obviously. And um, also, when things really become urgent and you have a lot of urgent things suddenly, ask yourself, are these things really important? Because if they're really important, they should have been, you know, uh, found out before. It should have been something earlier in the planning and in strategy that you could have think, okay, this is going to be important for us to be successful there. So we need to start working on it earlier instead of waiting until it actually becomes urgent to get done. So 
Um, this is really this is really about you thinking back about what could you have done differently, what could have been different options, um, where did you miss something? Because maybe it's something that you can work on uh, before the next phase and that you can start improving already. So do a good post-mortem debrief with yourself before you take a rest and recharge, obviously from from the big um, from the big um, workout uh, workload phase. And then the last one, obvious anticipation. This is for the before next time. Before next time, you want to make sure the situation does not happen again at all, or that if it happens and you have a little bit more work, suddenly it's not as big as what you just got. You want to make sure that you are using, obviously, the post-mortem that we just talked about so that you can already put some actions in place. Um, but as well, um, I would really um, recommend you to think about having tools in place that can really help you avoid the situation. So anticipating in, in advance and not making sure, make sure that this doesn't happen. So two tools I, was always, I would always recommend for you there. First one, do a 90 day planning, 90 days planning. 90 days is a perfect time to start mapping out what you want to do, what are your priorities, how the different projects fit with each other so that you can anticipate this type of workload. And you can already book your non-negotiable in your agenda and everything that is helping you stay sane and energetic so that whatever is coming, you can say, hey, I'm sorry, this is what I'm, what I'm working on right now. This is important and I cannot take on more. That's going to help you really filter, really address in advance. When you, when you have your agenda for 90 days, you are going to be able to see when things are going, adding themselves on top of each other too much. So you can already go address, have the conversation, say no, etc. And the second tool that is going to help you is um, what is called an opportunity filter. This is basically in advance thinking about all the criteria that you want to think um, each activity true before you accept doing it. So, you know, it's like, should I take a new project at work? Okay, I have my opportunity filter. These are the criteria. Okay, if I filter through that, it's a no, because I know I'm not going to be able to deliver or it's not interesting or it's not up to me to do it or the deadline doesn't make sense. Uh, think about how you could create criteria that will help you in advance, look at all your tasks and activities and really filter the one that are not needed and have more time to spend on the time that are on the one that are needed. And obviously, obviously say no if they make no sense, right? So this is what I would really recommend you to do. During take care of your energy, challenge the heck out of it. Post mortem, be brutally honest with yourself, look at what you could have done differently and start taking actions from that. And before the next phase, be more proactive. Create your 90 days planning so you can see what's coming. In, in a, in a, in, with a better view and also have opportunity filters to help you make sure that you are not putting too many things on your own plate as well. Um, and if you want to know about, more about what else you can do to stay sane, what else you can do to stay on top of your game and engage and avoid working like this by picks all the time, um, feel free to join my upcoming masterclass about the high performance uh, habits to see how you can implement you know, tools that can help you um, be more in control of your life and your agenda in general. Uh, the link is going to be in the comments and I hope to see you there.